Coming in at number 10, we have the undead Doctor Strange from the Marvel Zombies universe. While this version of Stephen Strange was able to avoid the initial outbreak of the zombie virus that destroyed their version of Earth, he was eventually tragically bitten and converted into a member of the undead army while defending a dimensional doorway that would have allowed the zombie swarm to invade and infest other realities. The newly zombified Doctor Strange now uses this doorway to peer through the alternate worlds of the Marvel Marvel multiverse and find ideal worlds for the zombie invasion to begin anew, making this a very weird but also very dangerous interpretation of Doctor Strange. Coming in at number 9, we have the Soldier Supreme, a very odd combination of Doctor Strange and the Punisher. On an alternate Earth where vampires have killed most of the world's heroes and converted much of the normal population, one of the few vigilantes remaining is Frank Castle. Possessed by the spirit and knowledge of Doctor Stephen Strange as a last ditch effort to save this reality, the Punisher and the Sorcerer Supreme combined into a single vampire slaying enemy, turning the Punisher's violent tendencies into the last defense against an unstoppable vampire army. Coming in at number 8, we have the Ultimate Universe version of Doctor Strange, aka Stephen Strange Jr. In the Ultimate Marvel Universe, this version of Doctor Strange that we're introduced to is actually the son of a more traditional interpretation of the character. Following in his father's footsteps, Stephen Strange Jr. eventually becomes the Sorcerer Supreme following his dad's disappearance. But the odd part that gets him on this list is unfortunately his over the top and needlessly nasty death. During the Ultimatum event, a highly controversial storyline in which Magneto wiped out millions of lives and resulted in dozens of over the top and edgy deaths for many Marvel heroes, Doctor Strange had his head popped like a literal balloon by Dormammu possessing his cloak. Most people dislike this event because of how deliberately edgy it tried to be, and with an anticlimactic death like this, it's really not hard to see why. I mean, his cloak? Really? Coming in at number 7, we have the powerless Doctor Stephen Strange. In issue number 40 of the first volume of Marvel's original What If comics, we got to see an alternate reality where Baron Mordo wound up becoming the Sorcerer Supreme. And while most of the story would focus on Mordo's misadventures in the role, Doctor Strange's role in it is definitely unique to say the least. When Stephen Strange showed up on the Ancient One's doorstep, wondering if there was any possibility the Mystic Arts could heal his hands, the Ancient One simply taught him some anxiety decreasing meditation, and then sent him on his way, making Strange believe that it was all some sort of yoga retreat. This version of Strange would go on to merely become a peaceful professor at a medical school, which, compared to the Sorcerer Supreme's usual lifestyle, is definitely a little bit, well, strange. Coming in at number 6, we have Strange Supreme from the first season of the Disney Plus show, What If? In an alternate timeline where, instead of losing his hands in a car accident, Stephen Strange instead has to endure the loss of the love of his life, Dr. Christine Palmer. Desperate to bring her back, Strange trains in the mystic arts, but finds himself drawn to much darker powers as he realizes that Christine's death is a fixed point in this timeline, and it would take an incredible amount of magical power to undo it. Turning to the dark side and becoming Strange Supreme, Strange absorbs centuries worth of magical beings before finally absorbing even his own better self. Tragically, even when he does have enough power to save Christine, she is disgusted at the monster he's become to save her, leaving him alone as the entire universe collapses around him. Coming in at number 5, we have the elderly Doctor Strange from Earth 982. An alternate universe that mainly focused on potential children of Marvel heroes and the next generation of crime fighters, Earth 982, or MC2 as it's more commonly known, is also home to one of the most unique versions of Doctor Strange, because instead of his traditional salt and pepper look, this Stephen Strange has gone full Gandalf the White. Having long since retired from the position of Sorcerer Supreme, an elderly Strange is called back into action as a master of the mystic arts when the new wielder of the role, Doc Magus, begins to tamper with darker powers. And while Strange would need help from the younger generation of heroes, this grizzled but still magical sorcerer is definitely one of the coolest looking versions of the character. 
Coming in at number 4, we have Doctor Strange of the year 1602 from the Marvel series of the same name. In this offshoot of the multiverse where many of Marvel's classic heroes were now born during the era of the 17th century, Doctor Stephen Strange was an advisor to the first Queen Elizabeth, and the right hand man to the monarchy when it came to all matters relating to magic. This old timey take on the character would be weird enough on its own, but gets extra bizarre when you consider that this this version of Strange was eventually executed by the monarchy for treason, but continued to give guidance to this Earth's heroes as a ghost from the afterlife. Talk about not retiring when your time is up, am I right? Coming in at number 3, we're back in the world of animal puns with croc -ter Strange. That's right, Loki isn't the only magical hero with an alligator alter ego. Hailing from the same reality as the meme-worthy spectacular Spider-Man, croc -ter Strange is an anthropomorphic crocodile who learned his magic from a being known as the Rancid One and often clashes with the pig-themed Bormammu. And if that's not punny enough for you, this version of Strange is also a member of the Unhumanati instead of the Illuminati, which also features a mouse themed version of Iron Man. Ooh, and I thought they said Disney taking over wouldn't have any weird side effects. Coming in at number 2, we have a wild combination with the DC Universe with Doctor Strange Fate. During the Marvel vs DC miniseries of comics, an alternate reality known as Amalgam Comics was born, featuring combinations of iconic DC and Marvel heroes put into one body. One of the most notable of all of these crazy combinations was the being known as Doctor Strange Fate, a three-way mix-up between Doctor Stephen Strange, Doctor Charles Xavier, and the DC hero Doctor Fate. Man, this guy's got more PhDs than a diploma factory. With all of these magical, telepathic, and reality warping powers combined, Doctor Strange Fate was incredibly powerful, but one of the weirdest aspects of the character was the fact that he knew he was just a temporary creation of a cross over event, and thus spent much of his time attempting to find a way to keep his reality ongoing. How very meta of you, Doctor Strange Fate. And finally, coming in at our top spot is the only Doctor Strange variant with feathers, we have Doctor Strange. Hailing from the same weird world as Howard the Duck, aka Earth 791,021, you might be wondering why a duck themed version of Doctor Strange is labeled as weirder than a crocodile themed one. And that is because this Doctor Strange is also a drunk. Studying under the ancient wino, this this Strange's version of communicating with spirits is literally drinking spirits, although he does still possess enough magical energy to be able to transport himself and various other duck themed heroes to different dimensions, including the mainstream Marvel Universe. Just maybe lay off the booze a little bit, I'm not sure how well birds can handle their liquor. In a 10, Poison. Poisons are a species of crystalline extraterrestrials spawned by the Poison Queen. Originating on Earth 17952, the Poison spends an unknown amount of time as prey for larger, stronger creatures before discovering that they could assimilate symbiotes and their hosts to become more powerful. Poison Captain Marvel was the poison who assimilated Venomized Captain Marvel of Earth 81622. Poison Captain Marvel attacked D-Man and Rage on Manhattan Bridge alongside Poison Killer Thrill, Poison Hyperion, Poison Gamora, and Poison Thing in order to attract more powerful heroes. <laughs> kind of a burn. This attack led to the creation of Poison D-Man, Poison Rage, and Poison Thor. However, this poison most likely died along with the others when the queen was killed by the time displaced Jean Grey. And at 9, Imposter. Part of a training program with the intent of eventually replacing Earth's heroes, this scroll was permanently turned into a copy of the Kree warrior Marvel to avoid any possible detection. However, a problem emerged when the real Marvel died. So this scroll was no longer useful in the training program, and he couldn't really return to his true form, preventing him from returning to his normal life. However, he wasn't just going to lie down and die, so the scroll allied himself with two other scrolls in the same situation, posing as the deceased heroes of John Proudstar and Adam Warlock. After some time, they had a run-in with Kitty Pride, who they mistook for her scroll imposter and then took prisoner. But realizing that she was the real deal and that Galactus was about to arrive, they let her go and joined forces with her and Wolverine in an attempt to save their people and the X-Men. The Skrull was ultimately gunned down by another Skrull when he attempted to stop a Skrull general from keeping people from getting on board a spaceship, I'm guessing to evacuate. And it ain't Rogue. 
When Rogue touched Miss Marvel to absorb her powers, Carol grabbed onto her arm and didn't let go. So in addition to Carol's Kree DNA glitching up Rogue's powers, the prolonged contact caused each to end up absorbing the powers, memories, and personality of the others. They kind of swapped places. Rogue sought out Professor X's help, and afterwards she was sent to space as a consequence of an encounter with Brood. Rogue and Carol Danvers were briefly visited by Carol's counterpart from the Prime Marvel Universe using the powers of the Reality Stone, since the gem links her to the other wielders of the gem and other realities and they can all kind of like communicate with the wielder of this earth being Anna Marie. They talked about the differences between their lines before the visiting Carol was pulled to earth 70875. But yeah, Rogue having Carol Danvers' powers, that's actually pretty weird. And it's 7, Philo Vell. After Janus Vell, then known as Captain Marvel, previously destroyed and recreated the universe, the new version was subtly altered with Fela Vell's existence being one of the changes. Fela Vell was the second artificially created offspring of Captain Marvel, who was created by her mother Elysius in the new universe because her first attempt, Janus Vell, had been so successful. She fought her brother, who was insane at the time, and in the process of helping to restore his sanity, she then tried to claim the Captain Marvel title, though her brother refused to give it up. To save Rick Jones' girlfriend, Marlo Chandler, Jenna's had to travel to the future to see what would be the cause of her future demise. He asked Phyla to stay behind on Earth to keep watch over Marlo, and in doing so, she encountered the being known as Magus, who tried to kidnap Marlo. She and the telepath Moondragon foiled the plot, and Jenna's returned to Earth shortly after, telling her that he stopped a villainous plan to release Magus hundreds of years in the future, but wouldn't explain how. But like, bro, I just fought him. Couldn't you have done that a little sooner? And it's six AI Avengers. This android-based Captain Marvel was one of the many robotic versions of the Avengers created by Raz Maldra, which were in turn inspired by Egghead and his AI Avengers. They were dispatched to fight off the Hulk and the forces of Hydra at the Mount, but were ultimately destroyed. But I mean, like, come on. An AI version of Captain Marvel is pretty weird. But honestly, based on what I talk about on Top 10 Gaming, it's par for the course for me. Halfway through into number five, Jen is veiled. After a falling out with Captain America, Rick Jones found himself mentally drawn to a pair of extraterrestrial golden bracelets, the Nega Bands. Donning the bands, Rick slammed his wrists together with all of his might, and his atoms traded places with those of the exiled Kree Captain Marvel. Joined together, Rick and Captain Marvel lived a shared existence. During the epic Kree Skrull War, Rick and Captain Marvel became pawns of the Kree Supreme Intelligence, who unleashed the untapped psionic potential of Rick's mind, the Destiny Force, to put an end to the war. Sometime later though, as a result of the exposure to deadly nerve gas, Captain Marvel perished from incurable systemic cancer. As Rick slowly began to move on with his life, eventually getting married, Marvel's love, Elysius, felt more alone than ever. Using Titanian science, Elysius sampled some of Marvel's genetic structure to conceive a child, Genis. To protect him from Captain Marvel's enemies, Genis was artificially aged to maturity and taken to an isolated world where he would be safe from harm. Upon discovering of his true lineage though, Genis donned wristlets modeled after the Negabands worn by his father and was determined to carry on his father's heroic tradition, eventually calling himself Captain Marvel. In it for William Marvell. William Marvell, also known as Billy Marvell, was the combination of both versions of Captain Marvel from both DC and Marvel in the shared Amalgam Earth. This version of the character shares the powers of both Captain Marvel and Shazam from the DC Universe since originally Shazam was named Captain Marvel. This version of the character was also a member of the Judgment League Avengers and first appeared in JLX number 1 from 1996. On this Earth, Earth 9602, he's actually a young boy who when shouts the word Kree, transforms into a super scientifically enhanced adult hero. His fellow members of the Judgment League Avengers are not aware of the secret though. After Angel Hawk, Canary, and Goliath found Super Soul Soldier, Captain Marvel soon joined and formed the Judgment League Avengers. He was then transported by Doctor Strange Fate with other members of the Judgment League to battle Thanoside. When Mariner was accused of blowing up oil freighters, and the US government branded him an eco-terrorist and Captain Marvel and other non-metamutant members of the JLA captured him and imprisoned him without a trial. So... Kind of a little wishy-washy wishy on the whole 
morals. Getting close to the end in number three, MCU Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers is depicted as a former US Air Force fighter pilot who was given superhuman abilities when a light speed engine test went wrong and she was exposed to the cosmic energy of the Tesseract and subsequently transformed into a human Kree hybrid known as Veers via blood transfusion. In 1995 on the Kree Empire's capital planet of Hala, Danvers, then known as Vers, suffered from amnesia and recurring nightmares involving an older woman, particularly as a former Air Force test pilot who acquired cosmic energy force powers from the Tesseract after an explosion that wiped her memory. So, um, uh, you can kind of see where that was going. But I'm including this version of Captain Marvel not because she's weird, but because for some reason everyone seemingly hates this version. So much so that when I mentioned how the MCU Captain Marvel could beat the MCU Hulk since MCU Thanos beat him and she was going to beat MCU Thanos without, if he didn't have the Power Stone at least, everyone still got mad at me. And I, they some still hate me to this day. You should have seen my DMs after that video went out. And still, sometimes I get messages about how these some of these fans hate me, okay? All because of my literal second video on the channel. And that's the reason I included this, so I can finally say my piece. Redemption is finally mine! Penultimately, in at number two, Mahvel. Marvel is the Captain Marvel of the Marvel Ultimate Earth, Earth 1610. For millennia, an ancient extraterrestrial race called the Kree have tracked and studied a mysterious planet-eating creature they called Galactus. Sounds like a Skyrim shout. The supreme intelligence restricted this knowledge to specially trained high-level Kree, fearing that if the true nature of Galactus became common knowledge, it would drive their race insane. Several years before Galactus was due to arrive in the Sol system, the Kree he staged a covert observation mission on Earth, and Plus Commander Marvell underwent massive nanosurgery to appear human, going undercover as physicist Dr. Philip Lawson to investigate the human race. Growing fond of humans, Vell joined SHIELD's ACES program to speed up humanity's progress of the stars, helping to develop a zero point energy source for manned spaceflight. On the day that the ACES 01 test article was going to be launched, the base was attacked by a Kree kill form with orders for Vel to aid humanities no further. Refusing, Vel just obliterated the kill form, but the effort left him powerless and he was captured by S.H.I.E.L.D. After questioning by General Nick Fury and Captain Carol Danvers, Vel briefed them, the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, and Thor regarding the existence of Galactus and, you know, kind of updated them on the whole situation. Finally, in a number one, actor Marvel. The man who would one day be known as the captain was an ordinary but slightly stupid human from Brooklyn. He spent his life frequenting bars and getting into fights. As a child, his alcoholic mother hung his teddy bear from a noose, so yeah, that would kind of mess you up. However, after gaining his powers and joining the anti-traitor group known as Next Wave, the captain would want to change his name. While looking into using the name of Captain Marvel, he actually found out about someone totally different from the Captain Marvel of Earth 616 that we know. Instead, he learned about an adult film star who was using that name. Yes, you heard me right. When trying to use the name of Captain Marvel, the captain came across an adult film actor who was using this name. And honestly, I think that's probably one of the funniest versions of this character that there is. I don't care if it's not Carol Danvers or Marvel, but it's someone going by the name of Captain Marvel making adult movies. Okay, and you know that's gonna be a number one spot for me, hands down. Technically, okay, technically there is an Earth where all the Marvel characters are adult stars. And the MCU is just one big adult film franchise. Starting off our list with an honorable mention at number 10, we have Captain Carter. Normally, I'd put my girl Peggy higher up on any list, but since she's less weird and more awesome, we've got to put her here. Captain Carter actually originally debuted in the Marvel Puzzle Quest video game during a celebration for Captain America's 75th anniversary, but was given a fully fleshed out backstory and has been a fan favorite ever since. In a universe where Steve Rogers is assassinated before he can be given the super soldier serum, Peggy Carter is instead the one who becomes an incredibly strong and iconic hero for the allied forces. The comics would continue her adventures with her universe's New York City coming under attack with nuclear weapons by the Red Skull and eventually lead to her joining the superhero team the Exiles after their multiverse spanning adventures brought them into contact. 
Next up on our list is the center point for one of the most controversial Marvel storylines of all time, the infamous Hydra Cap. Initially appearing to be the main Marvel Universe's Captain America, this version of Steve Rogers had grown up indoctrinated by Hydra's fascist ideologies and was actually sent to America to kill the creator of the superhuman serum for the Axis powers, but instead wound up deceiving his way into receiving the serum himself. Having wound up in the main Marvel Universe when their Steve Rogers was rejuvenated back to his usual age in a different storyline, this Hydra Cap was able to hide his evil intentions until the pivotal moment that he declared to the world those shocking words, Hail Hydra. Seeing one of comics most inspiring icons twisted in such a way was definitely unexpected and definitely earns a surprising spot on this list. Coming in at number 8, we have the blood-sucking Vampire Cap. In a universe where Captain America fought and then lost against the villain Baron Blood, soon the entire Avengers team was overtaken by his vampiric disease. Consumed with a lust for both blood and power, this Steve Rogers began a year-long killing spree that culminated in killing Baron Blood and taking his place as the new Vampire King. This version had all of the benefits of the Super Soldier Serum, in addition to new vampire abilities such as healing so advanced, he was able to survive getting decapitated when facing off against several other Marvel heroes. I guess going for the head isn't as effective as we all thought. At number 7 we have Ultimate Captain America, a character that probably wasn't intended to be read as weird when first created, but has since turned out to be a bit more of a unique interpretation of the character. Notably more destructive, assertive, and just a bit grumpier than most other interpretations of Steve Rogers, he could be seen as a different interpretation of American patriotism than more classical versions of the character take from. In another wild and tragic twist, this Cap's version of Red Skull is actually his literal son, the result of his last night with his World War II era girlfriend, Gail Richards. Completely unknown about by Steve and born after he was frozen in ice, the baby was taken by the military and grew up in foster care. Growing up with an inferiority complex, this child would eventually scar himself and become the criminal mastermind, the Red Skull. Talk about a messed up family, Steve. Coming in at number 6, it's Steve Rogers. No wait, it's Stephen Strange. No wait again, it's actually Stephen Rogers, Soldier Supreme. In a pocket dimension known as Warp World, where every soul of the Marvel Universe has been merged with that of another, Doctor Strange and Captain America were DNA digivolved into the combined form of the Soldier Supreme. In this unique part of the multiverse, the superhuman experiments done by the Allies during World War II were achieved through magic instead of science, with the weak and scrawny Steven Rogers being taught the ways of dark magic and learning powerful sorcery. With a best friend known as Bucky Wong, a literal winter soldier after he becomes a ghost, this combo of characters is definitely a standout in a multiverse full of standouts. At number 5, we've got the alternate future showstopper of Danielle Cage, the Captain America of the future. The grown up child of both Jessica Jones and Luke Cage on Earth 15061, Danielle has taken up the mantle of Captain America in a Manhattan where climate change makes flooding incredibly frequent and gangs roam the streets. With her own arch nemesis in the form of the Golden Skull, Danielle Cage is also one of the physically strongest Captain Americas throughout the multiverse. Inheriting both the strength based power sets of her parents and letting her yeet that red and blue shield as hard as it's ever been thrown before. Coming in at number 4, we've got a bit of a change of rank with Colonel America, aka Zombie Cap. In a world where an infected sentry brings a zombie plague from beyond the stars, and also where Steve Rogers has achieved the rank of Colonel and the Presidency of the United States, America's hero is bidden along with many of the Avengers when they try to contain the sentry situation. The Colonel is even the one to eventually bite Spider-Man on the shoulder when the younger hero tries to help. This zombified version version of Steve Rogers retains all of his powers and more, surviving with half of his brain exposed until he was finally defeated by his enemy the Red Skull during a final battle over who gets to devour the corpse of Galactus. Definitely some very, very weird stuff. 
At number 3, we've got another character with a Dragon Ball Z style fusion in the form of Clark Kent, the Super Soldier. And no, this didn't suddenly switch over to a DC Comics themed video. In the Amalgam Universe, where the Marvel and DC multiverses have been compressed and combined into one unified world by the megaversal beings known as the Brothers, Super Soldier is the result of mixing the backstories of both Captain America and Superman. Clark Kent is a young man from Kansas who winds up receiving his powers of strength, heat vision, and flight, not from being a Kryptonian, but by volunteering for the Super Soldier program to help America during the Second World War, a process which is spied on by a very mischievous Jimmy Olsen. He would go on to fight the leader of Hydra, a version of Lex Luthor, and Super Metallo, a combination of Metallo and Red Skull's usual brand of killer robots. Double the trouble, double the fun. Coming in at number 2, we've got a version of Captain America that doesn't even need America. That's right, it's Captain Avalon. Coming from a Marvel Universe inspired by classic sword and sorcery fantasy, this version of Cap is merely called Stevan until his son, funnily enough named Stevan Jr., is kidnapped by the Dreadlord, an evil alternate version of Baron Zemo. While he doesn't appear to have any actual magical abilities or equivalents to the Super Soldier formula, Captain Avalon is a brave knight at the peak of human condition, and his red and blue shield still brings the core of this classic character to to light, even if America doesn't really exist in this Game of Thrones style world. And finally, coming in at the top spot for our weirdest alternate versions of Captain America, we have a choice that's not even human. That's right, it's Captain Americat. Hailing from Earth 8311, the very same world that's home to the spectacular Spider-Ham, this version of Cap is named Steven Mouser, leads a group of superpowered animals known as the Scavengers, and in another groan-inducing animal pun, most notably led them into battle against the supervillain Moltron. While his appearances have mostly been related to side stories compared to Spider-Ham's main adventures, Captain Americat is definitely the oddest version of Steve Rogers that we've yet to see in the Marvel Multiverse. Then again, maybe I'm just biased for the top spot because I'm a cat person.